the word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop. And it means to take what you've already got and turn it into something better. It's not like you're going to create concentration out of nothing or your discernment out of nothing. You use whatever concentration you already have, whatever discernment you already have, and you simply apply it more and more and more consistently. And that's how it grows. Some people say, I have no concentration, no discernment. If you had no concentration, no discernment, they would have thrown you into a crazy hospital for crazy people. We all have some concentration, we all have some discernment. It's simply a matter of connecting it. We can focus on something for a little bit and then we're off. Then we bring it back and we're off again. We'll try to make those periods when you're with what you're focused on longer and longer, and the periods away shorter and shorter. And that way, whatever concentration you have does begin to grow, it does begin to develop, it gains strength. So you work with something that you've got, which is the breath that's right here. It's coming in going out. Whether you're with it or not, it's coming in going out all the time. It has its truth. As a John Fung would say, though, are you true? Are you true to doing the meditation? Or if you stick with it, that's how you show your truth. It requires mindfulness, the ability to keep this in mind, and alertness to keep watching what you're doing, and then ardency. You keep at this and try to do it as well as you can. And you learn how to talk to yourself to give yourself energy, because ardency isn't just effort. It's learning how to make yourself want to do it. And so whatever way you have of talking to yourself that makes you want to stay with the breath, see what works. And you find that that's another part of the mind that you're training, the part that talks to itself. All too often we're told that the, the inner critic is bad and you have to get rid of it. But you have to train it. It has a lot of potential. After all, the Buddha said the practice is one of commitment and reflection. You commit yourself to doing this, and then you reflect on how it's going. And if it's not going well, you figure out, well, why is it not going well? What can I do to make it go more smoothly? What can I do to make the concentration stronger? And it's that way you train your inner critic, the one that's commenting on what you're doing all the time. So it's actually a useful member of the committee devoted to meditation. So if you find yourself talking to yourself in unskillful ways, you say, well, this is something I've got to learn how to develop in another direction. It requires some thought in order to meditate. So learn how to get your thinking in line. That way, as you get more and more wise in how you talk to yourself while you meditate, that wisdom can then transfer over to the rest of your life. So if you find yourself talking to yourself in ways that get you discouraged, that get you upset, remind yourself, you can talk to yourself in different ways. All those teachings that the Buddha gave over those many, many years are examples of how you talk to yourself skillfully. It's an important part of the path. He calls it verbal fabrication. And verbal fabrication, if you do it in ignorance, is going to cause suffering, but if you do it with knowledge, it can be a part of the path. So we're taking things that we already have and training them in the right direction. So don't think that you have to create concentration out of nothing or discernment out of nothing. You take what you've got and you teach it how to grow. And that way the meditation begins to give results, and the results are going to be satisfactory. <laughs>